Hi, welcome to session three. In this session, we are going in depth into financial ratios. So, welcome to session three, entrepreneurial finance course. What you will see in this session is trying to find shortcuts so that you can analyze the health of a company. The first question you might have is why should we use financial ratios? The objective here is that we become like, or at least we are able to do part of the job that a financial analyst, so the idea of becoming a financial analyst without maybe having to do all the proper steps that we would need in a normal situation. So it's like taking a shortcut to try to see in an easier way and quicker, how is the health of a company. Just remember that what happens is that we are basically looking at trying to get some answers on how is the financial situation right now. So at the moment that we are seeing the data, the year that we are getting the data from, how has the management been approaching the financial management of the firm? Have they been conservative? Have they been very risky? Have they followed the industry trend? Have they followed a different strategy? And also, what is the short term of the firm? So by looking at the financial statements and the analysis we will be doing with the financial ratios, we can get an, at least a first view of what is the short term future. Is this firm quite safe, conservative, with plenty of cash for any kind of unexpected situation? Or is this firm in a situation where if anything goes wrong in the next months, we might be into trouble, we might be into a bankruptcy, for example, uh, scenario. Just remember, as we go now and we look into the specifics of the ratios, that if you are taking a shortcut, if you are taking a um, faster way of analyzing the health of a firm, there might be also some drawbacks, and those are here. What happens is that we are just using a formula, simplified analysis, and we just get sometimes just a number. So what does this number tell us as a result? Ah, sometimes we are missing more background information. We don't know actually what happened in the last months in that company or in that industry. So sometimes we need to be able to be careful when we assess the quality of that metric. Maybe use other uh, similar companies in the same industry. Maybe look for the historic values. So there are options to try to get a bit more of information and be more careful on the assessment that we might do based on that result. And also the evaluation of the result of the ratio is contingent of what is going on at that moment. What at some point looks like a conservative or even okay level of debt in another situation where there is a distress or financial concerns on the future of the industry, the view of analysts and investors might be very different with the same numbers or with the same situation. An example is the recent financial crisis that changed quite a lot how we were assessing the levels of debt that were okay for organizations. A good question is also, okay, why do I need to prepare? And uh, so now to move ahead, what do I need? Which type of um, information do I need to be able to do this financial analysis using ratios? Well, first of all, we need to have trustworthy information. We need to have good financial statements that we can start with. Usually the question would be here is that now you take a moment, so you pause the video, and you try by yourself how to find financial statements of a company. You can now pause the video. Welcome back. So we continue. You've been able to maybe find ways. Usually this information is in the corporate websites under the investors uh, space. You will see the financial statements of firms and you will see the official financial statements. However, nowadays there are a lot of financial platforms or websites that aggregate that information for you. And you can also find the simplified financial statements of many of the firms and that they are much easier to compare. Just be careful when you look at that information, try to check with more than one source because sometimes the data that is in some of those financial platforms is not consistent with the official data of the company. 
For example, some things that we will be able to do with the financial ratios is to analyze things like how much cash, cash does Tesla have? Will they be able still to survive the next quarters? If, even if assuming that some of them are positive, but maybe the following one is negative, will they be able to then stay alive? Will they be able to keep burning cash in their new developments or new projects? You will be able to answer those questions by looking at their financial statements. How many months do they still have or might they still have? Another thing you can get is like maybe some other startups like a Snapchat or other internet-based companies. You can also look at those financial statements and see, okay, are they actually making money? Are they operating uh, uh, with a, generating a positive margin or not? This is something we can also analyze with our financial ratios. There are many, many possible ratios. What we will try to do is to just focus on the main ones. Um, so which ones are those? Those are the ones that indicate how well the company is being managed. And this is what we call the profitability margin ratios. We also look at ratios that are related to the returns that they generate for their shareholders or the investors in the company, return on investment ratios. It's also interesting to look at the asset efficiency ratios. So how well does this company manage their assets? How much revenues are they able to generate? How much profits are they able to generate with their assets? Similar companies with similar assets might obtain different ratios here. This is quite interesting. It's also important to look at the overall financial leverage ratios. These are the ones that will explain why some companies, when things go bad, very quickly get into trouble, while other ones are able to be more resilient. Maybe they have a more conservative management. And finally, also related to these distress situations, the liquidity ratios. So if in the situation that the company needs to be dissolved, needs to be stopped the activity, then we will also be very interested in knowing the liquidity ratios, how much money we can get back by just liquidating the company. Is this part of our investment? Is nothing? How is the situation? Usually the liquidity ratios are more extreme case ratios. Without spending a lot of time, this again is a, an area where it's recommendable that you stop the video, you read it carefully, but those are the profitability margin ratios. From gross profit margin, operating profit margin, and net profit margin. Here you can see all the elements, all the factors or variables that you need. They come from the income statement. Now, those ratios that you see here, they start to combine elements from the income statement and from the balance sheet. So be careful, it's a combination. You need to have both financial statements now with you to be able to calculate those ratios. First, return on investment ratios, the classics ROA and ROE. Those ones are, they help us to see, regardless of the leverage of the company, how good are they at generating returns from their assets. ROE takes into account the leverage of the company. If you have only a little bit of equity, but a lot of assets, you might be able to generate a very nice ROE. But you need to be aware that you also will be paying debtors because they will, you will be running the company on the high debt. Asset efficiency ratios, all those ones that give you information about the turnover ratio of the assets. How many times are you able to generate a business with those assets? how many transactions you are able to do in one year. The more you are able to generate with the fewer the assets, the better they look. Financial leverage ratios, all those ones that explain us how much debt is this company taking in relation to their assets. How is the situation also when it comes to long-term, short-term debt? These type of ratios are quite useful to understand how is the company playing with also the time and the maturity of the debt that they might have in their hands? This is why we also like um, also aspects like the time interest um, earner ratio. Here, what we are trying to see is using the profits of the company, how many times can we pay just the interest of the financial debt that we have? This helps us to understand situations like that we might be postponing the capital of the repayment in the future, but we still have to pay some of the interests. So this will help us, okay, which is our safety margin here? 
to navigate these tensions or difficult moments. Finally, the liquidity ratios. So this again is this um, quick balance that we can check between the current assets, current liabilities. Is this something that is well balanced or there is a equilibrium in there? The same happens with the quick ratio. Current assets with inventories or current liabilities. Depending on the amount of inventory you might have, you uh, will get a result or the same result or a different result. Again, this is useful to check what happens if we go into liquidation scenarios. Now, here you should take a longer break. Now it comes an exercise. So the, again, I would say after I explain what is the exercise, stop the video and take your time. What we want to do now is to put those ratios into practice. So the suggestion here is pick one of those industries, pick a company or two of them, look at the financial ratios, prepare at least five of them, and then get ready to share your results. You can stop the video now and get into the activity. Welcome back. What we do next is that we would like to get those ratios that you've been able to analyze, if possible, for more than one of the companies in that industry and share them. So what you can do is you can use the link in the uh, session so that you can go into the spreadsheet and load your results. You can also compare your results to the previous year's exercises with different companies and see whether your ratios look normal, average, or they are a bit different from the normal ratios from some of those companies and how the companies have also changed across time. Take a moment also, stop the video if you need, and then come back. Now we try to do the opposite exercise. What we are trying now to do is the inverse. What we are, we will be using a tool that is, stock, is, is called the stock screener. You can use any stock screener you like. I'm suggesting here to use the one from Finance Yahoo, but if you like another one, use another one. What we would like to do is now you are familiar with most of those ratios. So pick the ones that you believe make more sense to make an investment decision, either if it's the leverage ratios or it's the financial return ratios or the asset return ratios, or if it's the more the operating ratios on how much profit the company is able to generate and looking at their margins. Pick the five, four, five that you like, and then use those ratios to select companies. The stock screener will allow you to input numbers, and then it will be giving you as a result companies that fulfill that requirement. Now, it's just a question about adding ratios, changing the thresholds, and trying to finish with the two or three companies that you find more interesting based on that. Now, here the suggestion is that you also take one moment and even share it with a colleague or with a classmate, post it in the discussion board. So let's get a bit of a change on what type of companies have come out from your criteria and your ratios. Again, here is where you can stop again the video. This is the end of the video. And that is also now the moment that you have time to work on those exercises. Thank you. This is the end of session three.